Hey guys, and welcome to another segment of hacking, modding, news, and info. This is a weekly segment, or at least I try to make it a weekly segment, where I highlight and go over some of the things that I think the viewers and subscribers of this channel would either find informative, useful, helpful in the hacking, modding, homebrew, and jailbreak scenes. This has a focus more on consoles and handhelds that have been modded, but I also may cover other devices like PC, Raspberry Pis, phones, and things like that. And the emphasis here is on you, the end user, not so much developers. And most of what I cover is anything that is new and or updated in the hacking, modding, homebrew, and jailbreak scenes. So with that, we have a lot to cover, guys. So just sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and let's talk hacks. And let's start with the PS4 scene, which of course is on fire and it has been for the past like week or week and a half or so. And then a few days ago, we got that unstable 6.72 jailbreak. I did an update on that. Some payloads have been updated, even more payloads and homebrews have been updated still. We're going to cover that in a minute. The last video I did explains the downgrading of the PS4 consoles. It's not a tutorial. It just explains the situation with that and the backporting of games again that's not a tutorial it just explains you know how the process kind of works and mainly can you backport games that are above 6.72 there's also a buying guide here where you can see which ps4s you can get brand new that will come at 6.72 or below and just a bunch of other stuff now modded warfare yesterday did this video here where he shows you how to backport this is kind of the manual long process kind of way to do it because the tool that makes it shorter and easier, he says it's not really all that great right now and he was waiting for the 1.7 update. Well, it turns out that the tool has been updated to 1.8 and it's much more automated. So he didn't even use it here in this tutorial, um, but he said once it gets more automated and makes things easier, he'll probably do another tutorial video using it. So let's hope that he does make an updated one using this latest tool. I will link the updated tool down in the description as well and the tutorial, I'll link it there too. And we'll continue with the PS4 and let's talk a little bit about emulation, specifically PS1 and PS2. First, this is a native working PS1 emulator on the PS4 is called PS1 H Demu, and this will allow you, as the name indicates, to run PS1 games on your modded PS4 natively, which is a pretty big deal. Now, this emulator was actually found in the code of the more recent medieval remake and so now it's been implemented here very interesting and continuing down that path we have an update to a couple of programs here that are for your pc that allow you to convert ps1 and ps2 games to fake package files starting with the ps2 fpkg it's now on version 0.4 and as i stated all you need to do is grab your PS2 ISO or bin file and it will convert it to a fake package file. There's a demo video here and the latest download is right there. And then the PSX version of it is just called PSX FPKG. This is version 0.1 and it does the same thing. You grab the PS1 bin file and it'll convert it to a fake package file that you could just install into your PS4. With each of these, there's different things you can do. You can change the icon, for example, the way it displays on your PS4, as well as the background when you select the game and all that good stuff, and a few other things here and there. And then the download link for the PSX version is right here down at the bottom. All right, and next we have a couple more 
apps that have been updated for the PS4. This one is PS4 App Lock. It's on version 1.02. It's been updated to support 6.72 firmware, and this can come in really handy for some of you out there. What you can do with this is that you can actually lock a particular app or even a game, or you can lock multiple apps and multiple games so that way no one can get access to them. Whatever you have locked, anyone who has access to your system will be locked out of that game or app or whatever it is you choose. This is primarily useful for people maybe who have younger kids and those kids have access to the PS4 or maybe you just have some irresponsible adults that have access to your system. Now this latest version only works for 6.72. You'll have to get the previous version if you're on 505 and you want to use this. Next up is Easy Package Extractor and the name pretty much says it all. It's on version 1.05. This one will allow you to easily extract any package files that you have installed in your system. You can extract them to an external USB device very easily. And just as with the last one, this version is designed only to work with 6.72, not 505. So if you are on 505, you'll have to get the previous version. And lastly, for the PS4, we have an update to PS4 Explorer, now on version 1.22. This is a file manager, file explorer, pretty much like any other, except for your PS4. Now this latest version, the only thing really it does is that it supports 6.72, but the good thing here is that it also supports the older uh, jailbroken firmwares like 505 and 455, so you don't have to go fishing around for an older version. This latest one pretty much has everyone covered. All right, now we move on to the PS3 scene where there's just a couple of things that have been updated. First, starting with Webman Mod. Now this latest update happened a couple of days ago on July 18th, but don't ask me what's been done in this latest version because I have no idea. That has been the case for most of this year, if not all of it, when Webman Mod updates, now the version number seldomly changes. It actually gets several updates before this number changes. Now, this wasn't the case before. When there was an update, the number would always change and you would know what was done in the update. If you go to the GitHub repository, you'll notice that the last information that's there seems to be from like May 4th and nothing else has been added. So who knows what's been done in this latest update. Your guess is as good as mine. And then there's the Apollo save tool. I've been wanting to do a tutorial on this for a while and I was going to do one last week, but then the PS4 stuff happened. So it keeps getting pushed back all the time, but I'm kind of glad because more features keep coming out. So when I do the tutorial, it'll be more complete. This time around, they added bulk save game resign support. Uh, they added the uh, save game region change support, some stuff with the cheats and a couple other things here and there. So hopefully I'll be able to get to that tutorial real soon. Now we head on over to the Switch scene where a few things there have been updated starting with Hecate, now in version 5.3.2 and of course along with that Nyx gets updated too as always. Now it's on 0.9.3. The main thing here is that they've added support for the latest firmware 10.1.0, which Nintendo pushed out a few days ago. Now the good thing here is that nothing really seems to have broken custom firmware like atmosphere still works people on the latest uh, 0.12 and 0.13 atmospheres still report that everything is working on this latest update and it seems like most homebrews also continue to work on this latest update of course as long as your sig patches are updated as well you can see here what this new update brings and then most people will be using the file that's inside of this zip right here. Then we have Switch Theme Injector, which gets updated. I've talked about this many times before, but this is a way for you to change your themes, add custom themes. You can even edit themes that already exist, or you could just make your own from scratch. They even change the layout of your home menu. Some people have even added some motion to some of these themes. It's usually pretty small, something very almost insignificant, but hey, it's something. It's 
it's better than it just being stale. There's hundreds if not thousands of different types of themes out there already. And again, you can either edit the ones that are out there or just make yours from scratch. All the instructions are here. When you go to the releases, you'll find that you have your homebrew NRO file there that goes into the switch. And then on the PC side of things, you're going to need to get this, the release 4.57 zip file. All right, continuing next with the switch, we have Homebrew Details. Now, Homebrew Details is a Homebrew app manager. It's kind of similar to the Homebrew menu, but this is something that is new and is a work in progress. But it does some of the things similar to the Homebrew menu, like you can delete your Homebrew apps from here. You can even reboot into a payload from here. You can check online for and download HD updates and launch the homebrews though is experimental although hopefully that will get sorted very quickly because that's one of the main reasons why you use uh, these type of homebrew managers but I like the GUI it looks clean it also gives you some pretty detailed information regarding your homebrews which ones were installed from the App Store which ones were installed uh, locally or manually and there's some other good information that you can get here again this is all new and the developer is looking for people to you know use this and give some feedback so that way he can improve it looks pretty good and maybe one day it will become viable enough to be a nice substitute to the homebrew menu now there's a few files that you can download here really there's only two you can download the NSP and the NRO and then each one of those is also available in a zip file. Normally when you have these two available, I always install both. That way I have the freedom of launching the homebrew from the homebrew menu or from the home menu. And now we shift our attention over to the 3DS scene and we kick things off there with Luma 3DS. Of course, as you know, this is the custom firmware for your 3DS, 2DS system. And this latest update of Luma 3DS is a big one. As a matter of fact, this is one of the biggest updates in a very long, long time. Probably the biggest one of the year. This is now on 10.2 lots of improvements, fixes, and all kinds of overall enhancements that have been done to improve Luma even further still. You can read the long list here. Then when you're ready to update, it's super simple. All you need to do is grab the zip file, copy and paste the two files that are in there straight to the root of your SD card, overwrite the ones that are there already, and that's all you gotta do. You'll be ready to go on the new 10.2. All right, and next is God Mode 9 I. And I'm going to include this with the 3DS section, although mainly really this is for modded DS and DSIs, although it can be ran in the 3DS, I guess through TWL Firm, which I'm guessing that has something to do with the Twilight menu. Now I do use God Mode 9, the regular one on 3DS, 2DS systems. I've probably done a good 50 to 70 systems somewhere in that area, and God Mode 9 has always been there and many of the features that are in the 3DS 2DS one are also here in this DS DSI version. You can copy, move, delete, rename files and folders, create folders, all that good stuff because it is a file, an access file browser for your DS and DSI systems. There's a lot you can do like dump Game Boy Advance cartridges on the original Nintendo DS and DS Lite consoles and the list just goes on and on. These are just some of the features here, but it can do far more than this. If you have a modded DS or DSi, you probably have this already installed, so make sure you update it. And if you don't, you need to get it because seriously, this is one of the first things you should install if it's even half as good as the God Mode 9 is in the uh, 3DS systems. So make sure that you read over what's new. Your zip file is right there. Unfortunately, I can't give you too much info on this specific version for DS and DSi because I don't have one of those systems modded, but I'm pretty sure if you have one, you already know what to do with the files that are inside that zip. 
and we will wrap things up by heading on over to the emulation scene. Two things we are going to cover very quickly. First, another update to CMU, which is the Wii U emulator for PC. And seriously, this is just a gift that keeps on giving. I've already covered it multiple times, but if you are a fan of the Wii U, this hands down is the absolute best Wii U emulator out there. Again, it is for PC. This latest update goes to 1.20.0. The download page is here. If you go to the change log and click on details, you'll see here that most of this update revolves around Vulkan OpenGL. Now, someone went ahead and even demonstrated this latest update here in this video. So I will go ahead and I will link the video as well so you can check it out. Games are smoother, brighter. They just play much better. This is a nice update and this video really kind of uh, shows off what they've done. The CMU emulator is really a labor of love and you can see it with all of these updates. It just, it's absolutely fantastic. Can't say enough good things about it. And lastly, we head on over to Libertro where a new core joins the family of RetroArch. This is a PlayStation 1 emulator called Duck Station. And yeah, it might have a funny name, but it seems to be a pretty nice emulator for PSX. Now, unfortunately, it's only available on three different platforms. They are Windows, Linux, and Android. And for Android, it needs to be Arch 64 only, at least for now, but they do state here that shortly this will be available for all RetroArch users, uh, which is of course a good thing. There's too much information here for me to cover. So if you get a chance, make sure you kind of glance over it so you can read up on the features. If you're familiar with using RetroArch, then you should already know how you get it. And they even list the BIOS for you here that are required in order to make this emulator work. They have some pretty impressive benchmark numbers here with these uh, crazy FPS numbers. Of course, they have a nice, decent uh, setup here in order to be able to achieve those numbers. Anyway, we're going to be getting 1.9 RetroArch very soon, and hopefully everyone will be able shortly to benefit from this latest PSX emulator. Hey guys, and that is going to do it for today and this week's segment. I'm sorry this stretched so long, but man, there was a lot of stuff to cover and you know I appreciate you watching. If you found anything here informative, useful, helpful in any way, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, you know the best way to support the efforts is just to hit that like button. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun. We will see you on the next one.